All right, so today I'm out here fishing. Today is kind of a special day for me. This is going to be a little bit different than just my normal fishing trips. It's December 26th. It's the day after Christmas, and uh, I lost someone really close to me Saturday, December 23rd, and it's just kind of sucked the life out of Christmas for me and some of my family and my father. And fishing for me is a lot more than just going out and trying to compete or maybe even just going out and trying to recreational have a good time for me fishing's a lot more um, it's uh for me it's like it's my chapel it's where i feel closest to god it's where i can go to get away when life struggles are too tough uh, i just need to get level-headed it just seems like life's throwing you curveballs and you can't seem to hit them or you can't understand them and for me, coming out fishing or in the woods or something, you know, that's my chapel. That's where I feel closest to God, where I can just, it's a lot easier for me to give it to Him while I'm out here. So today, it's, it's a beautiful day. It's a little windy, but uh, it's a day after Christmas, and I needed to get away. So I'm getting away, and I'm going to come out here and, and just do a little fishing. And this is it's what I've always done when I'm, when I'm not feeling good or even when I'm sick. It makes me feel better. But anyway, so that's what today is going to be. I'm going to be out here having a good time. I'm going to... I'm going to try some of these new Bobby Garland baits and try to catch some crappie and, and just enjoy my day away from all the life struggles, all the life conflicts and, and tribulations and stuff. So that's what today is about. I don't normally videotape days like today, but I kind of feel like it. So anyway, I'm opening it up and uh, uh, let's try to catch some fish and, and try to just relax, you know, and enjoy everything God has out for us to enjoy out here, the wildlife and and appreciate it for that and all the other things it can do for us it's you know it's almost like uh it's just healing you know it's just healing it's uh it's a natural antibody for me so i'm gonna share that today and, and hopefully that works out you know <laughs> i was even crying before i even started this so um i don't know that's what today's about for me that one on a, on a little slab slayer Bobby Garland uh, this is a crappie pro jig head this is a 3 16th ounce I'm fishing pretty deep and it's pretty windy so I got a pretty heavy head um, this is a blue and white color uh, anyway I was down there about 30 foot deep I guess and uh, well, what about 10 and a half 11 inch put him in the live well and see what I can do fish are just swimming around here I'll show you on my graph I wasn't seeing anything and then all of a sudden they showed up so I'll show you what it looks like on my graph uh, so I'm zoom in here and so I'm just sitting here I've got some waypoints marked here uh, as I came through I marked bait and stuff and uh, just a minute ago right before I caught that fish my graph looks like looks like that little Mark Daniels gummy worms as he calls them and uh immediately got a bite so that's what that's what i'm looking for those are active fish coming up off the bottom feeding and that's what they look like down here in the down skin too so anyhow uh that's what i saw when i caught that one so i threw my pro buoy out because anytime you're fishing offshore and you're trying to stay in the same area or kind of understand where you fished out or where the fish are located, you got to have a reference point. Your waypoints work really good, but there's nothing better than an actual visual reference point like that Pro Buoy uh, by Opticast. And uh, now, whenever I get a bite, I can look at that and see where I am relative to that. It's much easier than me trying to figure out where I'm at on a waypoint. I'll start off by throwing to the right side of it. 
We've obviously found a couple fish here, so that's good. Now, try to figure out where they're all hiding. See if they're in one big pile or not. I'm always watching my grass, see if something happens down underneath me. I've got my old tracks holding me pretty close to the same spot, anchoring me up. So just to the right of the buoy, I got bit, so just take me a little mental note there. In my next few casts, we'll go to the right of the buoy and see if I can get keep getting bit over there. And, uh, good to know, I just don't like giving them my jig, which feels like I'm going to. Look there, we got out. As soon as we got out of that brush, I got one. So, that's good. A little pile of them there. And a brush pile, and hopefully it's loaded up with crap. So, that was a good find. So now I know, just left in my buoy, I got a brush pile. And there's keepers on it. I was going to say, I see one on my graph coming up, about to eat my jig. I was watching my jig the whole time. That was pretty cool. Wish I could show you that. It's too hard for me to take the GoPro off. That's a good one there. That's probably 12 and a half inch or so. Does that one grow up? I want to show you guys this new bait by Bobby Garland. It's called the Pile Diver. It's got these little tattletale appendages on both two little arms on the side. And it's got them on the end of these long paddle tails. And uh, it's got a lot of action in the water. So when you're looking for a lot of action in your bait, this is a great bait to try. I also like how it kind of looks like a little human being. Looks like he's got little arms and long legs. But it's a really quality bait. And uh, I'm going to try to catch the fish on it. Like two bites in the very first cast. Hit it while it was falling, missed him, and then another one ate it. And there you go. First cast with the pile diver. That'd be a nice 10 inch crappie. Cast two fish on the pile diver. I just put that pile diver on. I've never fished with it. So that's two casts, two fish. Two nice crappie. That's pretty fun. That was easy. Yeah, and they're just eating that pile diver alive. That's a good 12 and a half incher there. fired up in there on that pile diver now. I think what I've done is I've accidentally thrown that buoy right on top of where the fish are, and so I'm having to fish really close to the buoy line, but so far so good. Still catching them. Again, that pile driver's killing them. After the other in there. Another pile diver fish. I've had a fun day today. 
just like I talked about earlier, it ain't always about being competitive and stuff. And this is really helping take my mind off all that stuff I was talking about earlier. And look at me, I'm smiling, I'm enjoying my day. And when I woke up this morning, I, I didn't feel like that. And that's something that God gives us in, in the outdoors, whether it's fishing or hunting or anything. And if you don't share that with people you love and your kids and, and stuff, uh, you know, they're missing out. So take people out, get them outside, take them fishing, take them hunting. There's a happiness there uh, that uh, they should all get a chance to experience, see if it's something for them. good one. I'm still on the same mine or same uh, pile diver that I started with and it's uh it's holding up pretty good. I think I've caught what 10 or 12 keepers on it and it's still holding up. digging just choked that pile diver another one you guys gotta get these pile divers go take them crappie fishing dude. these crappie love them they've not seen them a lot of times when you're on a heavy fish lake and you get a bait that they haven't seen before they just go nuts over it because they're like that has to be real but it's not <laughs> It can be 20 degrees outside and crappie can be hitting that hard. Very good. Yeah. Again. That one hit that so hard he couldn't resist that pile diver. Another fat chunk. <laughs> Big slabs. <sighs> it's so cold out here. I mean, just choking that pile diver. Choking that dude, making me get my finger all wet. So I think these fish are on to me. So I'm gonna switch it up just a little bit, and I'm put on a little uh, white chartreuse. This is a Bobby Garland mine mender. It's got a fork tail on it. It's really cold and sticking right now, but it's, there you go. You can see it's got a split fork tail on it. It's just like the slab slayer, but it's got a split tail. I 
I've always said it, whenever you quit getting bites, it's very important to uh, you know try a different color, try a different technique before you roll out of there and make sure you can't catch a few more bonus to it. So I'll try that. It works. Very first cast. I feel like I got a pretty good one here. So they'd quit biting it. They'd seen my blue and chartreuse mine or uh, pile driver a lot. And all I did was just switch it up. Something with a little white in it. Like I said, another Bobby Garland, they call it a mine mender. And I dropped down there and I caught a real good one. And I've been sitting here fishing here a long time. And uh, just took a little something different and ate it. Again, just quit catching them and just change baits. That's all it took. White and chartreuse mind mender with that crappy pro jig head on there. That's a slam. Another big one. <laughs> I mean, I knew they were still down there. I just something different. <laughs> Big it. Goodness. Looks like they fired back up. Fun. One after another. <laughs> that one fought like he's supposed to. Long one. So here's a new color that you may have not seen. This is a sweet home. This is a what do they call that? Sweet tea with lemon. 
So down here in the south, you gotta have something some sweet tea and some lemon. So try that Bobby Garden color out. That's the first time I dropped it down. And that might be the biggest one I've caught today. Sweet tea with lemon. <laughs> sweet tea with lemon catches big ones. Look at that. Choked the sweet tea with lemon. I love the name of the color of that jig. Oh, even when it's 20 degrees outside, a little sweet tea is all right. That's a big one. Sweet tea with a lemon fish, but we're gonna let that one go. There's sweet tea with lemon fish. favorite color no doubt it's sweet tea with lemon not only is it fun to say but they're eating the crap out of it a big crappie. Oh, man. Thank you, Lord. This is fun. Much needed fun. I mean, choked it, too. It's way down in there. There it is. We tea with lemon. Look at the size of that thing. That's a giant. It's probably 14 and a half incher. Not no two pounder, but Pound three quarter probably. I have another big one. Back to back big one. Yep. Wow. <laughs> back to back 14 plus inches. Wow. <laughs> yeah, guess what color? Sweet tea and lemon. Wow. sand bass. It's a sweet tea crappie.
It's like, uh, dude, this is a big one. Hold on. <laughs> Another sweet tea with a lemon special. Another switch to a purple and chartreuse mine mender. First drop. Ate it. about switching colors it's all about switching colors as soon as I quit hitting sweet tea I just switched to purple and chartreuse They're eating again cleaning crappy all night long feed me on the tour this year you know Dobson like I'll meet him Phenomenal day of fishing, and uh, I'm gonna have to end on this one because more than one reason. I'm freezing cold. I think I got my limit in there. I count and let some go. I think, and, and uh, I got a lot of fish to clean. So uh, today was a blast. Um, I got blessed today by God Himself to just have a good, good day on the water, and. Uh, all day today I wrecked them and uh key baits uh were all bobby garland baits i was sewing the crappie pro jig head i was sewing a 3 16th ounce again it's really windy today i was fishing pretty deep and i like having that heavier weight on there on those kind of conditions uh, this is a purple and chartreuse that's what i've been using uh for the last 20 30 minutes i switched multiple times a day 
Uh, I proved to myself again it's very important when the fish quit biting to not just give up on them, switch colors. Um, but the main colors uh, with this new pile driver, this Marty, uh, it's blue and chartreuse, it's bluegrass color. Um, that thing tore them up earlier uh, when they'd seen it enough. Again, guys, I'm in the same spot I haven't moved. Um, so I had to keep switching up what I was doing to catch them. But that pile driver is a new bait by, Bob, by Bobby Garland, and it's a must-have in your crappie arsenal. Must-have. You saw how well they ate that thing when they quit eating the other baits. Um, I switched to this white and chartreuse mine mender. That caught a few key bites, got them fired back up. Then when they were done with that, we went to this sweet tea with lemon. This is just a slab slayer. It's just got the single tail. It's not split like the mine mender. Um, but uh, they ate the crap out of that. I caught some really big ones on that. So again, these are the three. These are three colors that we had to have, and I got that purple chartreuse on the jig. Had fun all day today, and uh, you know, hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Uh, Merry Christmas.